Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you guys are good. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what I'm currently rocking on my iPhone 12 Pro. We're gonna go over the case, the screen protector, and several apps that I've been using on the regular. If you've missed my previous What's On My iPhone videos, make sure to check those out because a lot of the apps that I've used in those videos, I'm still using on my new iPhone. I will go over the ones that are more like staple apps though, the ones that I use day in and day out and I honestly feel like I can't live without. I'll go over those, but I'm not gonna go over every single thing. Let's go ahead and dive into the video beginning with the case that I'm currently using. If you missed my previous video going over, you know, the best iPhone 12 and 12 Pro accessories, make sure to check out that video because I get into more detail about the case and about the screen protector and several other gizmos and gadgets that you could use for your iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. So the case that I'm using is from Kadabi, which by the way, they did sponsor this video. So shout out to Kadabi for being a channel sponsor. I appreciate you guys. You guys that have been following me for a while already know that I'm a big supporter of Kadabi regardless of the sponsorship. I stand by their cases. And this is the new sheath case for the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. This is the black version. And I have my Peak Design attachment 3M'd to the back of it. That way I can use all of the Peak Design accessories part of their little ecosystem, which allow you to quickly attach and detach your phone from various accessories like bike mounts or a car mount or even a little tripod. Like I said, check out the video that I just did, the one right before this one, and I get into detail about all of that. But I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the sheath case. I love how form-fitting it is. It keeps a nice, slim profile. All of the cutouts are precise. You don't have to worry about it, you know, interfering with the usability of the phone at all. The buttons are nice and clicky. The case itself is rated for six and a half feet of drop protection, which is plenty for me. And when you combine it with the Whitestone Dome Tempered Glass Screen Protector I'm using, you get excellent screen protection and excellent drop protection with the case, which I'm a big fan of, especially in this nice slim profile. Now the screen protector is not your traditional Whitestone Dome Tempered Glass Screen Protector. It's called the Easy Glass. Basically they done away with the more intricate install process that involves like UV lights and adhesive glue. This is your more traditional install. You just line it up. They do include an alignment tray and it's a really easy process, but you still get all the great protection that Whitestone Glass is known for, like the 9.8 surface hardness. You're gonna get excellent scratch protection and you also get that wonderful oleophobic coating so you don't have to worry about smudges and smears and all that. It's case friendly, obviously, so it doesn't go all the way to the edge, but it covers the entire display portion of the glass. But anyways, it's like nine bucks, so you can't go wrong, and the Kadabi cases are really affordable as well. Links to those two things, as well as the Peak Design um, Kickstarter page can be found in the description if you feel like checking it out. And if you don't want the sheath, you also have Lucid Clear. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the wallpaper, my home screen layout, and the widgets that I'm currently using. So this is the wallpaper that I'm rocking. It's actually a stock wallpaper, which once I saw it, I was like, wow, that's a pretty dope wallpaper. So I picked it. If you go into your settings, go under wallpaper, choose new wallpaper, go to stills, and then scroll down. You'll see them right here. They're like a uh, cartoon version of their landscape wallpapers. I don't know, they're like vector images and it looks really, really good. So I went ahead and went with that one. Keep it simple, clean, it's the way I like it. And in terms of my widgets, I have a widget page over here that consists of my calendar, and then I have Apple News, the top stories widget. Since I'm an Apple One subscriber, I get Apple News Plus, which I'm definitely liking. And then below that, I have my battery widget. And then the last widget that I use is right here in the center, and that's my Google search widget. So I can access Google Assistant if I need to on the fly or just type in a quick search. And then behind that, I have my uh, weather channel widget. So that way I can keep up with the weather just in case any more of these crazy hurricanes pop up towards the end of the year. Really bizarre. So we'll start at the top here, going through some of the apps. If I dive into my social app, I have hashtag expert. Now hashtag expert doesn't work all the time, but when it does work, it's pretty useful. So I use hashtag generators specifically for Instagram. And what I do is I'll pick the number one hashtag that complements my post the most. So if I'm doing a post with the iPhone 12, I'll do iPhone 12, oops, 12 and then tap done, and then generate hashtags. And then it's gonna generate a bunch of hashtags that are associated with that primary hashtag. So you can see here, hashtag iPhone 12. So we have um, hashtag iPhone case, hashtag Apple, hashtag iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 11. 
Of course, all of these are not going to be applicable, so you can tap edit and then delete the ones that you don't want, save the ones that you do want, and then copy the hashtags, and then simply go back over to your Instagram app and then paste those hashtags. If you want to really dial in specific hashtags, you can come here and then enter multiple uh, hashtags like iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 mini, um, you know, a, a series of hashtags. However, you do have to subscribe to get that feature. And if I try it right now, you'll see generate hashtags. I have to be a pro member in order to do that. And the pricing is $2.99 a week, $7.99 a month, or $34.99 a year. I'm not really gonna pay for this service, maybe in the future, but right now, I'm good with just the free version. But regardless, even if you're not a pro member, it's still pretty useful. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of that. Diving into my Photos folder, I have my Photos app, and then I have Google Photos. I always put Google Photos on every one of my iPhones, simply because it's just an easier way to share photos between Android and iPhone on the fly. Then I have Visco. I'm actually a Visco subscriber because it's part of my Instagram upload process. Typically, I take a picture, edit it in Lightroom, then I tweak it in Visco, then it goes up on Instagram. What I like about Visco are the film stocks. It just really adds character and a unique look to your photos. So if I tap on one of my photos here, tap on edit, you can see it has a ton of different film stocks down here. And then you can just pick one and then you can dial it back if it's too strong. And then you can tap on the edit button here and you can adjust the contrast, the sharpness, add a vignette, and there's a lot that you can do. Now you don't have to be a premium subscriber to experience Visco. They do have some film stocks that are free and of course you can use the editor for free. But if you wanna get the most out of it, I think it's like 11 bucks a year. It's pretty cheap actually. It's not very expensive. So I also have focus. Focus is how you can really dial in a portrait mode shot. So if I pick a portrait mode photo right here, you can see I can adjust the blur, of course. However, I can also adjust the focus and really fine tune the focus position or the focus spot. I can adjust the shape of the bouquet. I can also adjust the highlights in the bouquet. I can adjust the vividness of the bouquet and I can even transform it overall. Um, and if I tap on a little lens button right here next to aperture, it gives me a bunch of famous lenses like the Helios or the Zeiss Otis, and it's going to replicate the bouquet of these lenses in my photo. So if I tap on the Zeiss Otis, you can see the bouquet becomes a little bit smoother. If I tap on the Helios, it's like a little bit swirly. So it's really, really neat. I do pay for this. I I forgot how much I paid, but it was totally worth it because it helps you get a unique look when it comes to portrait mode. And there's a lot of other stuff that you can do in here, such as lighting. So you can even apply a light. Um, you can apply a light bulb, a fluorescent tube, a flashlight, softbox, a ring light, a radio light, and then you can edit it in a 3D space or even in an AR or 2D space. Like I said, focus is definitely a GOAT app when it comes to portrait mode. And it has a built-in camera, so you don't have to just import portrait mode shots. Now moving on, we have Focus Live, which is pretty much the same thing, except it has a built-in video editor and it also allows for portrait mode video. So if I switch to the front-facing camera here and then come up right here on the bottom, you can kind of see it working. And um, I can just record real quick and hit stop, open up that video, tap edit, and I can edit it in a timeline. And you can see right here that the background is blurred out. So this is really awesome if you're trying to get like portrait mode video since the stock camera app does not offer that. Moving right along, I have my Adobe folder. This is all of my Adobe mobile apps. So I have the Photoshop camera, which allows you to do a ton of different camera effects and change the background in real time. It's really, really neat and pretty powerful actually. Uh, then I have Photoshop Express, I have Lightroom. Lightroom is my go-to photo editing app. But if you're not an Adobe subscriber, check out Snapseed. Snapseed is like the GOAT free photo editing app. Uh, Spark Post is for Instagram and even for thumbnails. If I wanna do a quick like side-by-side -side photo, there's tons of templates in here that you can choose from. Uh, Premiere Rush for editing a quick video on the fly. 
I just find Premiere Rush a little bit easier than LumaFusion on the iPhone. It's probably up there with iMovie. In fact, iMovie might be a little bit easier, but again, since I have an Adobe CC subscription, I might as well use Premiere Rush. Uh, Spark Video is the same thing as Spark Post, except for video. So if I was trying to do an Instagram post or a social media post that included video, I could use Spark Video and they have a few templates to choose from and uh, just makes your video pop a little bit. You can add text and different effects. Um, and then I have the Adobe Fill and Sign app, which of course, as the name implies, it allows me to import PDFs and then I can fill them out or sign them. And then I recently switched over to Apple Music and ditched Spotify thanks to my Apple One subscription. Let me know what you use. Do you use Apple Music? Do you use Spotify? Do you use Rhapsody? Let me know down in the comment section. My email app of choice is Spark. Spark is free, it's clean, it helps me stay organized when it comes to all of my emails, and it has a ton of features for a free email app. In my personal opinion, it's the best in the app store right now. I was a huge fan of Newton, but they really have disappointed me and let me down lately. All the false promises of updates and you know fine tuning things and all this and that, they never come through on time, so I had to just ditch them, and Spark is definitely my go-to now. Uh, on the next page, I have my smart home folder. So of course, Ring, Amazon Alexa. ProScenic Home is actually the smart home app for my new robotic vacuum from ProScenic. Not only is it a robotic vacuum, but it can dock itself and then empty out the bin into like a larger trash can bag type of thing. It's similar to the iRobot Roomba. However, it's a fraction of the cost. I'll be doing a full review on it soon. So make sure to stay tuned if you don't want to miss that. And then I have my Amplify app, which allows me to control my Wi-Fi network since I'm an Amplify user. I don't have the Amplify Alien, but I have their mesh network and it works really good. And then of course, LifeX. Um, then I have my filmmaking folder, DJI Mimo for the Osmo Mobile 4, which I featured in my previous video, so make sure to check it out. Uh, Axoon, which I have a video coming soon on the new CineEye. If you missed my old CineEye video, I'll link it at a card at the top, but basically it allows you to use your phone or your uh, tablet as a monitor for your camera using a wireless HDMI connection. Then I have the ROV Motion app, which controls my Rhino ROV slider. It's like a portable slider. It's super lightweight and it's great for um, shooting videos on a mobile phone. And then I have my Arc 2 app, which is also a Rhino app. It's uh, shooting me right over here and it allows me to control a motorized pan tilt head wirelessly using this app. Light Meter is my Lumu app. If you've been following me for a while, then you probably already know my love for my little Lumu device. It's a little light and color meter that plugs right into your iPhone using the lightning ports and it's pretty accurate. It hasn't steered me wrong yet and I've been using it now for like a year and then I used a prior version for a year. So I've been on that Lumu train now for like two years. It was like 300 bucks, but if you're big into content creation, it's like a priceless tool because it helps you get your white balance right every single time. I'll link it down below just in case you're interested. Um, and then I have full control, which allows me to control my Red Epic W, which I'm being shot on right here. And uh, I can control the focus, the aperture, depending on the lens that I'm using, it allows me to start and stop recording. In fact, I got it running right here. So you can see this is full control right here. You can see it's recording on the camera in front of me. I can choose the frame rate. It gives me full control over my RED camera, which is awesome, considering this is all done wirelessly. So go ahead and back out of my filmmaking folder, diving into my shopping folder, I have Hotstock. Hotstock is an app that you can track things that are out of stock and once they come into stock or restock, it will alert you and then give you the opportunity to purchase something. So for instance, if I go in here and do a search for PlayStation 5, you can see I can pick that item to be alerted whenever it goes into, or whenever it restocks. So if I tap alert me, now I can go into my alerts and you can see it right here and it's watching. And if I tap on it, it's watching for restocks in these stores right here. So eBay, Best Buy, Target, Target for delivery and Target for pickup, Walmart, GameStop, B&H Photo, Gamefly, Sam's Club, the PlayStation Store, Newegg, and on Amazon. And if it actually restocks in any of these stores, it'll send me multiple alerts until it's no longer in stock. So you can see hot stock working right here, alerting me that the PlayStation 5 just restocked in Walmart. So now if I tap on the hot stock notification, you can see it takes me directly over to Walmart to give me an attempt to purchase the PlayStation 5. 
it's a little annoying because when I say multiple alerts, I mean like I was in the process of trying to check out and it just kept alerting my phone over and over and over. It was a little annoying, but you know, it, it does work. Like it does give you the opportunity to go in there and get an item that you weren't able to get because it was out of stock. Um, if you become a pro member or a pro user, it gives you a lot more options and you can track multiple items. If you're not a pro user and you're just using the free app like I am, you can only track one item at a time. Okay, so moving on, we have my sneaker folder. If you guys know me, you know I'm a huge fan of sneakers. In fact, some might call it an addiction. I used to have them behind me, but I moved them because I got so many weird comments about having a shoe store or how can this be a tech channel when there's shoes in the background. People forget I don't have to have everything tech in my life. Like I can have other hobbies, but I don't know, simple-minded people, I guess. So I moved them, made it a little bit cleaner of a backdrop. But these are the apps that I use to purchase shoes and to track shoes whenever they restock or whenever they drop. Soul Links being the primary app for drops and restocks. Confirmed is an Adidas app. Um, of course, the Adidas app. Network is a cool app to get streetwear and even some collectible toys and other hype beast related things. So you can see right here, we have like some meltdown collectibles, uh, some shoes. Um, we have some more shoes collectibles. So there's a lot of stuff in the network app that you can purchase or they have multiple draws. Sometimes during the holidays, they just give away a bunch of stuff. So if you're into street fashion and you're into like hype beast stuff, make sure to check out the network app if you haven't already. Uh, StockX, Goat, both are places to pick up shoes that are dead stock and you can no longer purchase for retail. And then I have the Snipes app, which they do a ton of sneaker raffles. I got tired of always going to their website, so I just went ahead and downloaded the app. Moving right along, we have my Starbucks app, CamPay, Microsoft To Do, and Microsoft OneNote. Both of the Microsoft apps are free. If you need a good note-taking app, OneNote is the way to go. And if you need a good free to-do list app, Microsoft To Do is by, by far my favorite. Even out of all the paid apps that I've used, like things, I always go back to Microsoft To Do. Um, then I have BeatStars, which is a great app to find instrumentals and to link up with other hip hop artists or even just other music artists in general. It's like a social network for creators that are in the music space. It's really cool. And then I have Taver. If you're big into craft beer, you're gonna love Taver if you haven't checked it out already. So it's a place that you can order different craft beers from all over and they have a ton of beers to choose from. So you can see by swiping over, it just gives me a bunch of different choices. And what's great is literally every single day since I've downloaded this app, they've updated it and added new beers. So some of them might be on for a limited amount of time. So if you don't get in and get that beer, you might lose your chance to get it, but then it's replaced by a different beer so just always keeping their selection fresh, which I really appreciate. So if I wanted a beer, say I wanted to pick up this one right here, I could just tap get it and then select how many that I want. We'll say I want four, hit get it. And then I would just enter all of my information here and pay for it. Then I just enter my information, make the payment, and then they'll send my beer out. If you're into craft beer, like I said, definitely check out Taver. It's worth it, and I'm a big fan. To go along with Taver, I have Drizzly, which Drizzly uses local liquor stores, and they'll literally bring the liquor to your door. So it's kind of like Uber, but with a much bigger selection when it comes to alcohol products. So if I wanted to order, say, a bottle of tequila, I could just go under liquor, and then scroll down until I see tequila, tap view all, and then say I wanted to get this bottle of Patron right here, I could tap on it, add to cart, and then I can check out. So go to, go to cart, log in, and then check out. Uh, just having this option to get liquor delivered to your door is pretty neat. I'm not a huge drinker, but sometimes I like to have, you know, a drink on the weekends, especially on my cheat day when I'm you know, taking a break from working out and enjoying life, um, I might, you know, have a couple drinks. So this is a good app to have and something that I recently found that I've been enjoying. And uh, going back, we have all of my shipping apps down here, FedEx, UPS, DHL, and USPS. Some people have a dedicated shipping app where they can just input all of this stuff, but I've found since these apps link directly to your account, so I have an account with FedEx, UPS, DHL, and USPS, it's automatically gonna have all of that tracking info input it into these apps. I can simply just tap on the app and then it will link to my account and show me all the packages that I have coming in and going out. So it's just easier than having to input uh, tracking information into a separate app when it's already there in these apps. So even though it's multiple apps, it's okay. 
But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I'm using on my iPhone 12 Pro. I'll probably end up doing a what's on my phone video for my iPhone 12 Pro Max. So stay tuned for that. I'll switch it up though, add some different apps and maybe add some more customization to the phone, like diving further into widgets and maybe even doing some icon packs. Cause there's some really awesome iOS 14 setups out there that I've been kind of jealous of. So I might have to spice it up. Uh, this phone's actually gonna go to my wife and the 12 Pro Max is going to go to me. And that's really where I'll, you know, try to customize it and change it up. But yeah, that's been what I'm currently using on this iPhone 12 Pro. I hope you guys liked the video. Links to everything that I talked about, like in terms of the case, the screen protector, and the peak design stuff can all be found in the description. So just check there. Um, if you have any questions about the apps or you need a link to anything, just leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It does help me out and it helps the channel out. And uh, subscribe for more content like this and I'll catch you beautiful people in the next video. <laughs>